try to be short because I'm sure, actually, I'm just going to try to be short. Anyway, uh, so I am apparently invited here uh, to comment on the book as a historian. Um, so when I was first getting recruited uh, to the HM project um, uh, by by a, a certain founding editor of, uh, of <laughs> historical materialism who's known for his deep emotional intelligence and <laughs> empathetic approach to human relations. You know, he was kind of, uh, say badgering, you could say bullying, you could call it emotional abuse, I don't know. But so I was trying to articulate to him sort of my own insecurities as an intellectual, that you know, I don't have a PhD, that I only speak two languages. And he explained to me that in the dialect of English uh, on the island he's from, um, that's called a bluffer. And uh, I think that's appropriate, or it's appropriate that I, as the bluffer uh, in the HM project, um, closes up uh, this, this round. Because I think, uh, as David was just saying, uh, the fantastic thing about the interview format is you don't have to read the books afterwards. Or at least you can, you can say enough about the book at drinks during a gem conference that everyone will think that you have read the book. Or will, at least will not feel comfortable admitting that they haven't read it either. Um, and so the, the, four, the four interviews at the conclusion of the book that I'm supposed to talk about, uh, one by Jeff Ely, one by Enzo Traverso, with Jeff Ely, with Enzo Traverso, with Mike Davis, and the last one with Titi Bhattacharya, um, yeah, they, they offer an excellent overview of these four historians' uh, work, and um, I would hope that when you read them, you also then decide to read the books. But it is, uh, I think, in general, and specifically in these interviews, the interview is a fantastic format uh, uh, to present complicated information and a wide range of information in kind of a compressed and easily digestible format. Um, it certainly helps and kind of blows my mind having not read every interview but at least skimmed through the whole book and read interviews from all the sections. Uh, to what extent uh, the interviewer himself, George Souflis, uh, well it's kind of a specialist term, but uh, among historians we, say, we would say that he knows his shit. Uh, <laughs> and that the fact that he knows so much and is able to, to ask really provocative and interesting questions uh, to a whole range of authors uh, half of whose work I certainly don't know, I think testifies both to the fact that the guy reads a lot, uh, but also that these aren't just slapdash uh, conversations that you record on a phone, but rather these are pretty <coughs> serious, structured interviews that really give you access to a wide range of, uh, uh, of you know, contemporary important thinkers' thought. Um, so, you know, maybe some of you grew up in the 1990s, uh, in North America, for a while, when everyone was buying their first PC, there were like these books, like Windows 95 for dummies, and kind of like give an overview of how Windows works, and if you want to do something quick, how do you get there? And I, I would kind of look at George's book, among other things, as kind of a guide to historical materialism, uh, a guide to the contemporary intellectual left, not necessarily for dummies, because if you're reading something like this, you're probably not a total dummy, but you can, you can grab, get a lot out of it without necessarily being a specialist in the specific field that any of the interviews is in. So in that way, or in that sense, I think it's a very useful tool, especially but not only for young scholars who are trying to get a grasp um, uh, on Marxism, and specifically in the history section at the end, because as we all know, history is dying as a discipline, history departments are being closed uh, right and left, especially in North America, which is crazy, right? Because when you think of Americans, the one thing you think of is they know a lot about history. But apparently, <laughs> Uh, this, this is gradually dying, and I think as, as, as the left kind of, sort of, a little bit maybe begins to be re reborn, as uh, David was talking about, it's very important that, uh, <coughs> that we do take history seriously, and not in, you know, kind of a LARPy or historical reenactment sense, but to have a deep understanding of the last few hundred years uh, of human history, to be able to better understand our present moment. And in that, uh, on that note, I think that uh, I mean, the two interviews in the final section that I think are most, they're both the most extensive and also I think the most, most rewarding are the first two with Jeff Ely and Enzo Traverso. Jeff Ely mostly going through uh, his work on German history, uh, discussing the Zondervate thesis and how it's not very useful, also discussing his, uh, probably his most important book, Forging Democracy, which talks about 
uh, the fundamental role of the labor movement in the 19th century in establishing bourgeois democracy in Western Europe. Uh, I think it's a really important historical episode that most leftists are probably uh, not very well versed in, uh, and I would really encourage both everyone here, but also uh, you know anyone who's getting involved in politics to have at least a basic grasp of what has the left done for the last 200 years, so that we maybe don't repeat um, some of the worst mistakes. Enzo Traversal's interview, I think, is also very useful, um, because obviously, as well, Marxist intellectuals here, I'm sure that everyone other than me can read French, but uh, a lot of Enzo's work is in French and has not been translated uh, into English, and he offers a very useful, concise overview of his main works uh, for those of you like me who maybe can't actually read them um, in the original language. Uh, so yeah, one last little thing uh, I will say in closing is, um, this wasn't actually in my section, but uh, one of the interviews that I enjoyed the most, it's also one of the short interviews, is the interview with Bhaskar Sankara from Jacobin. Um, it's about four years old, I think, and you can see uh, in the way he talks, in uh, the way he's discussing Bernie Sanders, for example, um, how quickly, at least in the United States, things have changed in four years, and how the Bosker, or the moment that Bosker's talking about in this interview with George, feels like a lifetime ago, because, like, oh, you know, of course there's tens of thousands of socialists in the United States, man. Um, and in that, as pessimistic as, 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 as I might be um, most of the time, thinking about politics, um, reading that interview this morning did make me realize, or make me think about the fact that uh, we haven't only suffered defeats, right? Like, Syria isn't the only thing that's happened uh, in the last four years. And I think we, as, uh, uh, as the actual left grows, right, like not only the academic conferences, but the actual uh, left as a movement, the working class movement, to hopefully potentially transform um, uh, the world someday, I think our, uh, our immediate importance as intellectuals uh, perhaps declines a bit in that there are increasingly real battles going on in the real world over which we have uh, less immediate influence and perhaps will be less inclined to overestimate the importance of our intellectual contributions as real politics uh, takes place. At the same time, however, I would hope that that allows projects like historical materialism to continue and to flourish and to continue to serve as sort of laboratories or spaces for, for creativity <coughs> where we exchange ideas and hopefully contribute to discourses that inform a more astute, a more intelligent, and a more strategic left. And in that sense, I think uh, George's book is a great uh, you know, handbook to getting started in that project.